with God's elect and God's remnant teaching that word, verse 15, to execute judgment upon all to, and to convince or convict all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against them. So it has been all down through the years, but even more so in this final generation. When you teach the real truth of what happens to the abominable thing, oh, people get riled. It's politically incorrect. Who cares? It's what's morally correct that counts. I don't wish to see anybody go to hell. I don't wish to see anybody burn. But we're so close you can smell the smoke. Verse 16, and God is a consuming fire, smells good. 16, these are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lust, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration love each other because of advantage uh, to flatter. It's all right. It's love. God loves love. Remember it said in charity, your feast of charity? Be careful, my friend. Anything unnatural is perverted, and God doesn't like it. Verse 17, but beloved, remember ye the words which were, are, were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. Don't forget them. I'm bringing them to your memory. Verse 18, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust, perversion. Do you know where that's written? It's written in 2 Peter, right where it talks about the three earth ages, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 1. You're not going to have it. I'm going to read it real quickly. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. Verse 2, that you may be mindful of the words which are spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandments of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, our Lord and Savior. That means the Old Testament and the New. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust and saying, where is the promise of his coming? It ain't going to happen. For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of this creation. For this they are willingly ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old. You know, how many people know there was an earth age before this? How many, because of ignorance of people not teaching as Enoch did the word of God? Falling short. And let's go with the next verse in Jude, verse 19. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Always do that. Remain true. 21, keep yourselves in the love of God. Not the love of man. The love of God. Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. That unmerited favor, whether you deserve it or not on repentance, you inherit eternal life. 22, and of some have compassion making a difference. You can always tell God's elect by patience and, passion and compassion. They care about their brethren. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh to see the abomination and perversion that continues on to try to save and pull out to, into salvation. 24, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. You got that? And to present you faultless before the presence of his, whole, his glory with exceeding joy, that happiness, that pleasure, that, can, that uh, brings one to that point and place. 25, to complete the book. To the only wise God, our Savior. He is our salvation. He is our Savior. Be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. That's that. Take it or leave it. That's what that's, that means. That's what amen means. So 
what a fantastic book that Jude put forth. He said, I'd like to just talk about sweet things, but I've got to exhort you about the message that has, the one message that has given, been once throughout all time that must be brought to memory of what happened in the garden and what happened in the flood and what has happened in Satan trying to pervert the world. Hang on, my friend. We're in the final generation. We're in the generation of the fig tree. You're either going to make it or you're going to break it. You know, for those that break it, it's the end. But for those that inherit that eternal life, it's called salvation, love of God, then it is so valuable to love him and understand why you must count as an enemy anyone that would defend that that is ungodly, whether it be through the legal system. Don't do business with people in the legal system or anywhere else that go against Christianity. You don't need them. They're your enemy when they try to pervert Christianity. But stand up for everybody's right to believe totally as they please, but don't let anybody touch the word of truth. Hold it true and hold it dear to your bosom, for it is your salvation. It is your eternal.